Let's pray before we come to the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves once again into your hands. We commit ourselves to the Word of God and we surrender to its authority and we pray, Lord God, that you would minister by your Spirit today uh, the Word of Truth to our hearts and to the hearts of those who are watching uh, online. Father, may there be a touch from God. We adore your word. We thank you for it. I pray that you help me to minister it, not in my strength or power, but by the power of Almighty God. This is so important for us, Father God, today. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and we'll be looking at verses 34 and 35. The title of the message this morning is The Shepherd, the Lion, and Deliverance. The Shepherd, the Lion, and Deliverance. I'm going to be looking at this well-known story of David, the Shepherd King, who fought the lion in his shepherding days. Uh, in these verses, what we have here is a picture of the gospel, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We see in these verses the, the, the danger that threatens all people, the defeat of Satan, and the deliverance of God's people the rescue of God's people. Now, when we say God's people, when we talk about the rescue of God's people or, or Christ's people, we don't just mean those that have already been saved. Yes, hallelujah, we've been rescued. But we also mean those who don't know that they're God's people. But when their eyes are opened, they will also be rescued by grace through faith. The elect from eternity. It's always a thrill for me personally when I think of the, the truth of that, the truth that I have many people in this city. Don't hold your peace, Paul. I've got many people in this city. Keep speaking the gospel because I have many people in this city. God didn't have any people worth noting in the city of Corinth at that time. But in the eyes of God, he had many people because he saw those that would be rescued. He saw those that had been chosen for rescue from before the foundation of the world. So when we talk about the rescue of God's people, that's what we mean. We're rescued and there are brothers and sisters that we will get to know one day. So let's look at the passage then. David recalls his days as a shepherd and he speaks of the danger that faced every single sheep. This danger confronted every sheep in his flock under his care. Verse 34. Thy servant kept thy father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. That's the danger that faced every single one. There wasn't a, a lamb or a sheep that was safe from this danger. They needed a shepherd that would constantly be protecting them, constantly be standing over them, watching over them, willing to do what was needed in order to protect his flock. The lion taking a lamb 
from the flock. That's not just an account of a past experience. That's the image of a spiritual reality that we face today. We face that today. Every human soul is in the clutches of the enemy until they're not. David, the shepherd king, what a powerful picture of Jesus Christ, our shepherd king. We are the flock that bears his name. And we need the shepherd king to watch over us and to protect us and to hold us secure. We need him to be alert like David was alert and thank God Almighty, our shepherd king is watching all of the time. The lion, of course, is a picture of Satan. We are the lambs. David is the shepherd. Uh, Christ is the shepherd king. And the lion is the devil. The apostle Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5 and verse 8 that your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's the actual fact of today. Just as the, the lion would seize the defenseless lamb or the defenseless sheep, so too Satan seeks to seize. Oh, he's got the world in his hand. In fact, this picture would tell you that he's got the world in his jaws. And he's ready to devour. But as the flock that belongs to Jesus Christ, he's roaming around looking for the weak individual to grab hold of and to destroy. Pulling men and women into sin, into despair, ultimately into death. This is the reality that faces every human being. You see, it isn't true to say that the devil is only interested in the church that he only wants to destroy this flock. Oh, and he does. But it's not true to say that it's only this flock that he seeks to destroy. The devil seeks to destroy humanity. He hates human beings. And he seeks to devour human beings because they are the pinnacle of God's creation made in the image of Almighty God. And he seeks to destroy the work of God particularly you and me, roaming around vicious and terrifying. That's the reality. You see, by nature, we know that we're, we're sinful. By nature, we're born sinners. We aren't born innocent. Before Almighty God, we're born sinners. And you see, the devil sees these weak sheep, these weak lambs, these weak individuals, even from birth, claiming them, holding them in his jaws, ready to finish them off. But you see, that's something we don't realize. We don't realize that until Almighty God opens our eyes to see it. We can live our lives for so many years 
And we don't realize that we're in the jaws of the lion. We can live and we think we're happy. We live and we think we're free. We live and we think we can do whatever we want to do. That we are the masters of our own lives. And all, all the time we are in the, the jaws of the lion who seeks to devour us. And we can't see it until God opens our eyes and we see. That's the unseen truth. Jesus speaks about that in John chapter 10, that wonderful shepherd passage in John chapter 10. And he says in verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. He has no other plan. He has no other desire than to steal what belongs to God, to steal and to kill and to destroy. And without a shepherd, we are defenseless. Without a shepherd, we are unable to fight and to stand against the enemy's distractions, his subtle or otherwise temptations. Without a shepherd, but just as David cared for his flock, so too does Christ care for his flock. That's you and me. So we're sitting here in this church this morning and, and, and the fact of the matter is our shepherd is watching over this flock. Our shepherd is keeping his flock. Do we get things wrong and do we stumble? Of course we do because we're stupid sheep. I invite you this morning. I challenge you this morning. Show me an intelligent sheep. You won't find one. I'm not insulting you. I'm talking about me as a Christian. We are the flock that belongs to God, but sometimes we really need the shepherd to step in and say, what are you about? We need the protection of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. When we are walking with our eyes on the shepherd, we will receive that protection. When we are walking close to the shepherd, when we can see him, when we can hear him, when we can feel his presence, we have his protection. We go where he goes. We lie down where he tells us. We are fed by what he gives us. We are refreshed by the waters to which he leads us. When we are focused on the shepherd. But when we aren't focused on the shepherd. My goodness me. Do we get into a mess? But Zion. The king of Zion. Is also the shepherd of Zion. And when we focus our attention on Jesus, we can be confident that the way in which we go is the right way. So Jesus cares for his flock and we marvel at that and we rejoice at that. And we know that we are rescued. <laughs> But we are also here this morning because before we were rescued, the shepherd king was watching over his own who didn't know that they belonged to him. That's why we're here. Had the shepherd king 
Jesus not been watching over us even before we were rescued by him, we wouldn't be here. We would have been lost to the jaws of the devil. So you sit for just a minute and think back to what you've come through. The trials, the testing, the pain, the upset in your life. Before you get saved, I mean. Isn't it amazing that we can sit here today and we can look back and we can see that the reason these events, these issues, these circumstances did not defeat us is because the shepherd king was watching over us because we are his flock. Isn't that marvelous? I can now look back over my life and I see those situations that worried me at the time. They were never going to defeat me because my shepherd king was watching over me until the appointed moment when he would rescue me from the, the jaws of the lion. That's true for you as well. Maybe there are people watching, people listening, people who don't know Jesus Christ. There will be those watching who don't know that they belong to him. Oh, hallelujah. May that moment come and may it come quickly that the eyes of those sheep, those estranged sheep, those unknown sheep would be opened and that they would see Christ, their shepherd king. Because the minute we see Christ, our shepherd king, we come running. We hear his voice. And he leads us out. My sheep hear my voice. Yeah, we do. Hallelujah, we do. Thank God we do. But that moment when you get saved, that moment when you get rescued, you heard his voice. And you realize then at that moment, this is the genuine. This is the genuine shepherd. This is the genuine one. This is not a thief who comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And you don't run <clears throat> when you've heard the voice of Christ. When you have truly heard the voice of Christ, you don't run to some imposter. You run to the Savior. Because not only do you hear his voice, you see his cross. And you realize what a shepherd, what a king he is. He did that for me. Hallelujah. You see, when Jesus saw us, looked upon us, he saw the danger, he knew the danger that loomed over us. And just like David the shepherd, Christ, resolved to act he sees his lambs in the mouth of the enemy and the shepherd king says you're not having her you're not having him he she belongs to me and he did something about it in verse 35 david said that i went after him and smote him. He went after the enemy. He, he went after the lion. Who had the lamb in his mouth. How marvelous is this? Do you get this? Do you see this? That there was a time when Jesus saw you in the mouth of the enemy and he resolved to do something about it and he went after the lion to retrieve you. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Jesus Christ, the King of Zion. 
will not allow his lambs to be devoured. He saves us. He rescues us. It's an amazing picture that we find here with David and his lion of courage and victory. Pursuing the, an the, the animal and attacking it and taking back what belonged to him. And then when the lion turned to attack David, he took him by the beard and he destroyed him. Oh, this is Jesus. What a picture of Christ's work against Satan. Our shepherd king came to earth on a rescue mission. He pursued the enemy. And then he didn't shy away from the battle. As the enemy turned to face Jesus Christ. Our shepherd king didn't turn and run from the enemy. Oh no, he went headlong into the battle. On the cross, he dealt with him. On the cross, he dealt the decisive blow. and took us back and put us on his shoulder and carried us home. My sheep. That place of battle where Satan thought he had won the victory as he watched the shepherd king dying was the place of his defeat. It wasn't the place of his victory. It was the place of his humiliation. It was the place where Jesus took hold of his beard and destroyed him. Colossians 2.15 says, having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. That is the cross. He didn't just defeat the enemy. He made a show of defeating the enemy. He made a show that the enemy was defeated. Can you not say hallelujah, at least in your heart, to that reality? Because it's your reality, brother or sister. The shepherd king dealt the blow for you, his lambs. <coughs> Even if you don't know that you're one of the lambs of God. May the Holy Spirit show that you are a lamb of God by opening your eyes. So David struck down the lion. And Christ crushed him beneath his heel. What a picture. Thy servant kept his father's sheep. We are Christ's lambs, Christ's sheep, but we're the sheep of the father. We are the sheep of his pasture. And the shepherd has been watching over the sheep that belong to his father from all eternity. Isn't that an amazing picture? This is Jesus. And then, when the lion came, I pursued him and destroyed him and took back the lamb. But it cost him something. And we know that it cost him the cross. There, he was bearing the weight 
of the foolishness of the lambs. The foolishness of the sheep. wandering because of their foolishness. And here was Jesus bearing that upon himself, that sin, enduring Calvary, suffering the wrath of God on behalf of his sheep. That is Jesus Christ, the King of Zion. That is Jesus Christ, the shepherd king of Zion. That is Jesus Christ, the shepherd king of your heart and mine. This is the care he had for his own. And as he gave his life for the sheep, for those who have come, and for those who will come, defeating Satan, death, the grave, because our shepherd king rose again, hallelujah. And today, on the 25th of August, 2024, our shepherd king is standing in the midst of his flock. Praise God. Can you see him? Can you hear him? Can you feel his presence in Zion Baptist Church? Hebrews 2 and verse 14 tells us that through Jesus' death, he destroyed the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. This is our king. The one who seeks, the one who sought to take his flock and devour them has been defeated by our king. And we are free. We have been rescued. We have been delivered. You see, David's actions didn't just involve defeating the lion in some kind of punishment for taking the lamb. No, he took the lamb back. And we need to emphasize that. I went out, verse 35, I went out after him and smote him and delivered it, that's the lamb, out of his mouth. The lamb that had been snatched away was on the verge of destruction, but David rescued him. The shepherd's hand pulled the lamb out of the jaws of the lion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, you've done that for me. Thank you, Jesus, you did it for all my brothers and sisters. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the good news for every soul that finds itself in the grip of Satan's jaws. The good news is that when God opens your eyes to see you, in, that you're in the grip of Satan's jaws, you also see the shepherd king who's coming to rescue you. And what you do is you reach out for the shepherd king and he takes hold of you and he pulls you out of the lion's mouth. Hallelujah! That's Jesus Christ our Savior. That's Jesus Christ. The greater David come to deliver sinners. And those who realize us, those who realize that we were once trapped in Satan's grip, that we were unable to free ourselves from that grip. It, f 
fills us with a deep peace and joy in our lives. Not only that, and this is crucial also, we have a profound gratitude in our hearts towards our shepherd king. A profound gratitude that doesn't just cause us to say with our lips, I'm saved. Thank you. A profound gratitude that motivates us to live holy lives, to live lives that are close to the shepherd king, to live life in the shadow of the shepherd king, to allow the influence of the shepherd king to guide our lives. Isn't that what you feel this morning, brother or sister? Don't you feel a desire in your heart because you've been rescued to live appropriately before God? The shepherd king came to save me. He died for me. He took me from the jaws of the enemy. Surely it's not a lot to ask that I now live my life in holiness in righteousness, in obedience to the word of God. That sacrificial death, my goodness, it should mean an awful lot to us. He delivered us from the power of darkness, Paul says in Colossians 1.13. And he hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. If we have been moved from the <coughs> darkness into the kingdom of God, we need to live as citizens of that kingdom, as lambs that belong to the heavenly fold. Yes, we'll get it wrong but we won't habitually get it wrong in the same areas. Jesus reached and pulled us out and put us where we should be in his pasture. No longer slaves to sin. <laughs> no longer destined for destruction. We've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. The lamb, the lamb shed his blood that the lambs, let the sheep may go free and that Satan would have no claim on us. This is marvelous Zion. This is a cause for praise and worship. This should cause us to rise up to our feet and sing out the praises of Jesus Christ. Sing with all we have. Oh, that the sheep would sing. Not that the sheep would bleat, but the sheep would sing. Because he deserves to be sung to. Singing love songs to Jesus because of what Jesus has accomplished. Because of who Jesus is. I give unto them eternal life. Unto who? John 10, 28. Unto who? Unto the sheep. I give the sheep eternal life and they will never perish. Pastor, I've, I've read that a million times. I know that. Ah, but do you feel the Holy Spirit reminding you of that this morning? You are the sheep to whom he gave eternal life. You are the sheep that will never perish. You are the sheep that no one will be able to snatch out of the hand of the shepherd.
Our deliverance is secure because it's Christ himself who keeps us. And so as we think about this passage, we remember the story of David. It thrills us that this is, this is the gospel in the Old Testament. Are there sheep that have wandered? Oh, there are. And there will be. There are those who have claimed to be and are not. being separated from the fold because of sin. And the heart that is not longer, no longer fixed on the shepherd That's a dangerous position to put yourself into. To turn your back upon the protection of the shepherd king. Let's not do that. Let's stay focused on the one who gave the lion a beating. Let's stay focused on him. The shepherd. And the deliverance. That's our reality if we are truly saved. And I look out here this morning and it thrills my heart that we can stand together and declare, I have been rescued by the shepherd and I now live for him with all of my heart. In Jesus' name. Dearest Heavenly Father, how we thank you for this passage in the Old Testament. We thank you for showing us Jesus we thank you for showing us the gospel and reminding us of what lengths the shepherd king went to. Would you fill our hearts with a desire to live for him, to show that we are truly his by living for him? By obeying his word as he leads us beside still waters. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our shepherd. Thank you that you are our king. Thank you for what you've done for your flock. And it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen.